welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Ted Talk Stamps with your host, yours truly, Ted the Talking Stamp Collector. And today I'm going to talk about one of my major topical collecting interests, literature on stamps. More specifically, fiction, novelists and short story writers, which takes us back to a little over 400 years ago. Although the seeds of the modern novel actually started even earlier than that, about 450 years earlier, with this man, Chrétien de Troyes. And I hope I pronounced that right. Now, Chrétien de Troyes was a poet who wrote epic poems and is known for his writings in Arthurian legend. He is thought to have created the character of Sir Lancelot. He is also considered by scholars to be the inventor of the modern novel, as he developed the three-part structure that is almost universally utilized by today's novelists. Two hundred years later, Geoffrey Chaucer in England began writing his Canterbury Tales. Now, these were 24 tales. All but two of them were written in verse. Two of them were prose stories that were very long and many say very boring. And while Chaucer did earn the title of the father of English literature, he still doesn't belong in the genealogy of modern novelists. Now, while Chaucer was writing his Canterbury Tales, at the same time, over in China, it was the early Ming Dynasty period, and the writer Luo Guanzhong was hard at work writing his great historical novel, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which would go on to become one of the four great novels of classical uh, Chinese literature. This novel's influence on Chinese and East Asian literature is like that of Shakespeare on Western literature. It's the most widely read historical novel, and the Chinese consider it one of the greatest Chinese novels of all time. The story contains almost 1,000 characters, and you thought Russian novels were bad. And it recounts China's bloodiest period from the years 169 AD to 280 AD, when China was divided into three kingdoms, which kingdom is a bit of a misnomer as each region was actually ruled by an emperor who claimed suzerainty over all of the regions of China. Jumping ahead then, 200 years from Chaucer, we come to the year 1605 and the publication of what many consider the first modern novel, the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote of La Mancha. Now, whether it's the first novel or not is beside the point. It's certainly one of the most important novels published as it relates to modern literature. It's a complex story with themes and plots and subplots and characterization and the characters change from the beginning of the book to the end. In other words, it checks off all the points that makes a modern novel interesting to read. And these two stamps from Argentina and Chile celebrate the 400th anniversary of the birth of the author of that work, Miguel de Cervantes. In 1862, one of the great French novels by Victor Hugo, Les Miserables, was published. It was a commentary on the social injustice at the times. And though it was disparaged by critics who found it insincere, vulgar, repulsive, and inept, it was well received by the public, and it's today his most well-known work. Thirty years earlier, he had published Notre Dame de Paris, or as we know it, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. After its publication, many tourists flocked to the cathedral, which had fallen into neglect, and due to its newfound popularity as a tourist attraction, the city of Paris was prompted to restore the cathedral. Victor Hugo is depicted here on this charity stamp issued by France in 1938. 65 cents paid the postage fee, and the 10 cents surcharge went into a fund for unemployed intellectuals. Adam Mickiewicz is regarded as Poland's greatest poet and held on the same level as Byron and Goethe. He's known mainly for his epic poem Pan Tadeusz, or Mr. Thaddeus. And though Mitzkevich does deviate from my stated intention of collecting only novelists, I had to include him here because of this beautiful set depicting scenes from the story. It also doesn't hurt that Tadeusz is my own name. 
As you can see, there is no shortage of stamps honoring Mitskevich, and there's even a monument in his honor in Warsaw as well as in Ukraine. In 1835, Ukrainian Nikolai Gogol published what is probably his most well-known work, the historical novel Taras Bulba, about an old Cossack and his two sons who go off to fight in the war against Poland. In 1962, it hit the silver screen in an epic production starring Yul Brynner and Tony Curtis. And in 1968, it really hit the big time with a Classics Illustrated comic book edition. And in 2008, Ukraine honored Taras Bulba and his creator Gogol on a pair of postage stamps. Now, although I normally shy away from CTO issues, that is, stamps that have been cancelled without actually seeing any postal duty, I couldn't resist this miniature sheet with its postmark depicting Gogol in profile. In 2012, Ireland issued a pair of stamps honoring the centenary of the death of Bram Stoker and his greatest literary creation, Dracula. There was also a companion souvenir sheet showing the two stamps as movie posters at a cinema where you see the Count himself buying a ticket for the midnight showing. Agatha Christie is the best-selling novelist in history, and her novel, And Then There Were None, is the best-selling crime novel of all time, having sold well over 100 million copies. In 1991, Great Britain issued what's called a prestige booklet honoring Agatha Christie. A prestige booklet is a deluxe stamp booklet that includes a dozen or more pages of text and pictures about the subject, though sadly no commemorative stamps. As you notice, the stamps included in this booklet are just Mason portrait stamps of the Queen. That was rectified, however, in 2016, when Great Britain issued this set of six stamps depicting scenes from some of her novels. Take a closer look at the center stamp on the bottom row. This is from the story, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. When you enlarge it enough, you can actually read the letter in his cold, dead hand. If you can, Roger, my very dear Roger, forgive me the wrong I meant to do you, since when the time came, I could not do it after all. Well, that completes this brief look at world literature on stamps. I'll be following up later with a, another episode covering American literature. Meanwhile, stick around for the slideshow in which I'll feature a few more stamps on world literature. And if you know of more stamps of your own, let me know in the comments below. Until then, this is Ted the Talking Stamp Collector, thanking you for watching and wishing you all happy stamping.